years ago you could buy an acre of land at $2 or $3 or $4 or $5 40 years ago you could buy an acre of land or $10 or $20 or $30 maybe $40 I don't know you help me maybe $500 could buy you 10 acres at one particular point in this nation one day and the very very nation it has not changed the trees are still the same the soil is still the same the water is still the same people are still the same but in that very place where you could buy an acre at $500 now you cannot even buy a meter something changed are you following what I'm saying look at the world 200 years ago 200 third world countries and these ones you call fast growing Europe America they were only Europe America were like two three times richer than any third world country you know on the face of the earth just 200 years ago or less probably 150 years ago then in the 1700s industrialization came they started making clothes out of wool the spinners started spinning in the early 1800s steam engines then the steam engines affect locomotive industry huh? trains ships are all operating on steam engines and then the bath of electricity and you realize that the biggest biggest inventions that happened in human history during that time happened between 1830 to 1840 that 10-year gap was a leap and that's how we enter what you will call the first industrialization industrial revolution isn't it historians when we enter the industrial revolution these nations start moving faster than any nation that did not have industry Britain was among the leading and then America was there too up there and then these other Germans the, the the Swiss and they all start following what these other people are doing and before you knew it 10 times 20 times 30 times 40 times they started to become richer than the countries that were not doing these industries what had happened something in the spirit realm had taken place the world has devolved into another disruptive age or eon and when you study church history you realize again in those 1800s 40s 50s and 30s that's where we find the Great Awakenings. The first Great Awakenings was about 1810, again in the Industrial Revolution had just begun, which had the Whitfields, the Jonathan Edwards and, and the like, the, the Zizendorfs. You realize by the time we get to the climax of what now should begin the Industrial Revolution in the 1840s and 1850s, that's when we see the Kenry Revivals and the Grandison Finney Revivals. During that time, the church was moving with the world. Because as industrialization was coming, it was as a result of something that had begun within the church. Nikola Tesla, the guy that invented uh, electricity, the guy, the original brain behind electricity, his father was an orthodox priest, he was a man of God. The stories say that he, even when he was growing up, he wanted to be a minister. He started to be a minister. The story says that he was always in his father's library trying to prepare to become a man of God, a minister. His mother came and told him, use that very spirit of ministering to invent something to change the world. He diverted from being a minister and then got that very anointing that his mother had imprinted on his spirit. And that's the brain behind the bath of electricity. Alongside Thomas Edison. Meaning, that wherever development has been economically or otherwise when you go down to the roots you are going to see the work of the church as a catalyst of the blessing that then happens on nations what scares me is when nations start to evolve and you don't see the work of the church 
that's what scares me because you go back through ages you will see there's a connection study the instinct study who you're going to realize there was a spiritual thing there because the bible says wisdom is the mother of all witty inventions so we can connect everything that brought the world to what it is in correlation with what was happening in the church at that time whenever revival hit the world innovations came whenever revival hit the world inventions came human history has proved it times without number now we've entered the age of disruptive technology we have nfts we have cryptocurrencies we have blockchain technology we we have the metaverse we have augmented reality we have artificial intelligence now that's a world that many christians here if you ask a christian what is an nft they don't know which is okay you don't need to know but i'm saying as it happens in the world and the world is evolving in its own eons there has to be an equal measure of the church in fact a measure higher and further by the church because we are the ones supposed to bring this through the spirit into the world what then does it mean when the bible says that we shall be the heads and not the tail you think we're just going to sit up and people sit down no being the head and not the tail means that somewhere somehow as this revival is happening i'll get a son of mine and tell him something and it will get into his spirit and that thing will translate into the cure of cancer as people are getting healed we have an answer for the world why won't they come to look for us Our problem is that we are insisting on having revivals that come without reformation. We think it's just enough for people to be filled by the Holy Spirit and speak in tongues. But we have seen revivals of religion. People have spoken in tongues. People have been filled with the same Holy Spirit. The intercessors are dying in our churches. They cannot even afford food. And we are calling that revival. No, I'm talking about a revival that is going to get cancer out of your body. It's going to get HIV out of your body. But make you the next president of this nation. Make you the next prime minister. Make you raise the next inventor, next innovator, next doctor. To bring the cure of something that nobody can cure when COVID hit Uganda we have a born-again man he's a professor in Uganda he spoke in tongues and God gave him a remedy we lost not more than 3,600 people COVID X or something and this man is spirit filled he just went on his knees and says rabo da gozilaga so katala diga bo zinda kata ropo while they were immunizing first shot second shot booster for us who are praying mago da ziga rokotila romba diga zogoto si katala pade soriga logatala pa yes we need the healing power and the miracles and that one cannot be an exception at all we, we it is important divine imperative that we need power but also we need christians functional in the world we need christians functional in the world you've heard of stories of george washington he declares fasting in the whole parliament and they have to fast how can america not grow that nation evolved to a place where they even have something they call American dream. They, that nation has its dream. But some people don't understand. Dream there is eon. They created their own world. Of, they have convinced their spirits that they are the greatest nation. They are sure of it. They are convinced it's inside. Things are not working. If you go to Dubai, Saudi Arabia, Qatar, those people are doing better. But it's in the American spirit. They believe that they are the best. Why? Because 1901, Topeka, Kansas City, Charles Baham revival happened in America. Azusa Street happened in America. Uh, holiness movement, praying movement, charismatic movement, Holy Ghost movement, 1992, the Catherine Coleman. All of those movements happened in one continent, America. When God moved, the nations grew. The Bible says righteousness exalts a nation in Daniel chapter 12 the verses 4 he brings back that law that God has silently hidden they are called hidden instructions and he says 
this but thou Daniel conceal these words and seal up the scroll until the end of the time and he says many will go back and forth and search anxiously through the scroll and knowledge of the purpose of God as revealed by his people will greatly increase this is what he means God gave Daniel a scroll and he told him conceal this thing this is hidden wisdom to the end of the ages but in there a generation of people will arise who will start to search out these things because they need to understand what was sealed by God deliberately remember God has a way of hiding things for your glory the Bible speaks of the wisdom that was hidden from the beginning of the earth for your glory he hid it for your glory anything God conceals is for the glorification of man not the destruction now God raises a group of people which were seekers they were searchers they were men who started to go out into whatever God had revealed to Daniel and as they went into the scroll to search anxiously the knowledge of the purpose of God as revealed by his prophets the Bible says knowledge started to increase so when you go in the KJV when he says in the last days knowledge shall be increased it means your generation is supposed to know more than Apostle Paul's generation now let's define revival this law is fundamentally functional in every dispensation in the last days knowledge shall be increased today knowledge is increased than it was yesterday tomorrow heaven is going to release more knowledge than you knew today and next year heaven is going to release more mysteries to demystification than you do you knew seven or eight years ago it means technically speaking Paul cannot know more than you know because he laid the foundation people don't live in foundations we live in buildings and he says take heed how you build meaning our generation could even look at Paul and say this foundation began right but we can go further this far we can take it higher we can extend it to the next level because from the foundation a building can only go higher but we are dealing with a generation that can't even understand one Paulin letter and he's asking for revival so you want to speak in tongues and heal the sick then open scripture and speak 400 years backward so revival is not when God takes you back to the early church revival is when he takes you back to the point we last lost him to continue the journey that's revival to take you back and say okay here we moved up to here then we lost him somewhere here liberalism came politics came the love for power money competition titles they all covered here so let's go back to where we lost him first and continue the advancement of the church that's revival can't God do something can't God do something father can't you do something that will make the world muffle and then it says this has never happened somebody put your hand on your head and say Jesus it must happen while I'm still alive do not let me leave this earth until I reveal the eon you have revealed in my spirit